let's go to the next question. All right, so this one is a question that is also based on probability, a very powerful concept. Um, it's very useful, very, very important for you to understand what is going on here. Now, Harry, the question is question 11, this is for us, it says, Harry shoots arrows at a target board. He has a 50% chance of hitting the bull eye on each shot, okay? What is the bull eye? It's the center part on this board. The target board has got this, the part that is right at the center and everybody who shoots these arrows wants to obviously shoot that particular uh, uh, section. Okay, cool. So apparently, Harry has a 50% chance of hitting the bull's eye on each shot. All right. So question 11.1 .1 says, calculate the probability that Harry, right, will hit the bull's eye in his first shot and his second shot. So the key word there is the word end. This is a very important word, end. Okay? Now, you will agree with me the probability that involves the word end can be worked out as following. The probability, okay, of hitting the bull's eye, okay, hitting the bull's eye, um, probability of a hit will be equal to the probability of a hit on his first attempt, right, multiplied by the probability of a hit on his second attempt. Calculate the probability that Harry will hit the bull's eye in his first and the second um, shot. Why? Because we know that the probability of event A and event B is basically the probability of event A multiplied by the probability of event B. This is what we know, the probability identity, very powerful. So in this case, our, our events are both success, hit and a hit, okay? So the probability that it's going to hit it on both occasions will be the first hit and the second hit, okay? So it's probability of the first hit times the probability of the second hit. So the probability of the first hit is, according to this 50%, that is 0 0.5 as a decimal, times the probability of a hit again is 0 0.5. Why is 0 0.5? Well, we're told that he has a chance of 50% each time. It doesn't matter how many shots he takes, he always has a probability of 50%. So the product of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 will just be 0 0.25. So this will be the probability. You can write it as 0 0.25, or you can write it as 25%. We're not specifically uh, told how to express the solution. So if you write 0 0.25 or 21%, 25% or 1 over 4, all those will actually work out as correct solutions to this problem. Very simple. Not bad at all. Okay, cool. Now, the second question says, calculate the probability that Harry will hit the bull's eye at least twice in his first three shots. All right. Now, this is a question that requires you to use one of the tools of probability. The tools of probability are not necessarily the product or the calculation of probability. There's a couple of tools that we use. We use a Venn diagram. We use a tree diagram. We use a two-way table, right? So you have to select which tool will be useful for a situation such as this one. What is going on here? Well, two things are happening. You're either going to hit or you're going to miss. Imagine if you're shooting an arrow, okay? or even if you're playing darts, if you're throwing something, there's two opportunities there. It might hit what you want it to hit, or it might not hit whatever you want it to hit. In this case, we want to hit the bullseye, that part that is in the center of that board that you're talking about. Very important. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tree diagram to try and illustrate what is going to happen here. So we'll start here. Remember what is going on here. He is going to try, okay, and hit three times. So he's going to take three shots, okay? and try to attempt to find this bull's eye. So I'll have two options, a hit and a miss, okay? So in this first shot, he may hit the bull's eye. If he doesn't hit the bull's eye, he may do what? He may miss the bull's eye. One H will imply hit and then an M will be a miss, okay? Where H is actually implying a hit, which is a success, and then an M will just imply a miss. This is if he doesn't succeed to hit this, okay? This is the first time. Then it's going to go again. When it goes again, two things might happen. Let's say the first time he got a hit. It means the second time he may hit or he may miss this on a second attempt. Okay? Now let's go back. Assuming that in the first attempt he missed, we're going down now. If he missed the first time, the second time two things may happen. He may hit or he may miss again. Very important. All right. Now let's go for a third trial. What you see here is because of the first trial, and what you see here is because of the second trial. But they said it's going to go three times. Let's go the third time. So when it goes a third time, two things may happen. He may have a hit, or he may have a miss. Once more, if he missed here, the next round may be a hit, or it may be a miss. 
the same applies there. He may have another hit or a miss, or he may have a hit or another miss. So these are all possible outcomes when I'm considering three trials. So these are three trials that you may end up having. Very important for us to keep this in mind, okay? Now, they say to us, calculate the probability that Harry will hit the bull's eye at least twice in his first three shots. So let's put these possible outcomes. These are possible outcomes that we can get um, from all these attempts that Harry is going to basically make. Very important, okay, cool. So he may hit three times. What I'm doing is just going through a track, okay? He may hit, hit, and hit again. So he may hit successfully three times. So we may have three H's, okay? Or if he doesn't hit this three times, he may hit twice. Which route am I taking now? I'm taking this route, he may hit, okay? Hit, and then miss. That's what may happen. Very important for us to uh, take note of that. So the next attempt may be a hit first time, okay, from left to right, and then he may get another hit, and then he may miss after that. If it's not that, it may be a hit, a miss, and a hit, okay, H, M, H, or if it's not that route, it's gonna be a hit, a miss, and another miss, okay? So what does that look like? Uh, that's going to, I'm, I'm sure guys are starting to pick up the pattern now. Maybe a hit, and then a miss, uh, and then another miss. Okay, if you go with that, maybe a miss, hit and hit. It may be miss, hit and hit. Oh, it's a miss, hit and miss. Uh, it's miss first, so he may miss, he may have a hit, and then he may have a miss, or he may miss, and then after having a miss, he may have uh, another miss, and then have a hit, or it may be a miss, a miss, and then at the end, and another miss again. So it's a, a total loss in total, right? So very important. So as you can see the track that you're taking, H, H, H on top, H, H, M, right? And then H, M, H, okay? And then H, M, M, okay? M, H, H, M, H, M, 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 H, and then M, M, M. Those are all possible outcomes that you can get from this trial. Okay, now we are looking for the times that this guy is going to succeed to hit this thing at least twice. So we're looking for a minimum of two. At least means we want a minimum of two, okay? So what you simply look for is all the probability outcomes that have H appearing twice. We want him to have a hit at least twice. So where is this happening? We're just looking for all the areas where there's H twice. At least a minimum of H, which means two or more. So the first part is this one. So there we have more than two. The second part will be this one. We've got two of them here. Okay, the third one is here. We, again, we have two hits. And then we have two more hits here. Okay, and then I think that's about it. There's no way else where we've got two H's. It's two M's here. There's two M's in the next one. There's two M's and there's three M's in the last one. So all the possible uh, outcomes that can give us the desired result are those ones that I have in blue circles. So what are the probabilities for each one of them? The probability for the first one, okay, that one is actually 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Somebody's asking, why are you getting the 0 0.5? Well, remember, on the branches of your tree, you always write the probabilities. We were told in the opening statement that the probability of getting a hit or missing is 0 0.5. In fact, we only told about the hit. So if it succeeds half of the time, you're obviously going to lose half of the other time, okay? Okay, so all the time I've got a hit is going to be 0 0.5, all losses are 0 0.5, a hit is 0 0.5, a loss is 0 0.5, and then we've got 0 0.5, and then we've got 0 0.5, because the probability of either hitting this thing or not hitting it will always be a half. So we've got all those 0 0.5s everywhere there in your tree. The numbers that appear on the branches of the tree may change. They may change depending on the story that you're working with. The important thing that you need to remember is to always write the probabilities on the branches of your tree. If you write those probabilities when you try to work out the, uh, the, uh, the outcome at the end, you just multiply all those probability values you see on the tree or on the branches of your tree. Very important. Okay, so where am I getting that? Those 0.5s is for those three H's. 0.5, uh, this one here, times 0.5 here, times 0.5 here, for those three H's. That's where I'm getting the probability of getting the heat three times, okay? The second one will be this one, but what, what's the probability of getting here? Again, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, three times. Okay, very important. So 0 0.5 uh, times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, where each 0 0.5 represents the probability of getting whatever the outcome I have. Okay, the other one will be this one. Again, I'm sure you can see now, we're going to have another 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times another 0 0.5 here. 
Okay, and then lastly, right at the end, the one at the bottom, the probability of getting there will be 0 0.5, which we have exactly here, times this one here, 0 0.5, and then times this one here, which is 0 0.5. So the probability of going that route will obviously be those 0 0.5s multiplied with each other. We then have 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5, multiplied by 0 0.5. So what you do after finding all these possible favorable outcomes, you just add all of them. The answer I'm getting from each one of those, I just add all those, that will give me the total probability that this guy will succeed to achieve whatever he's looking for. So what is the answer to this? Well, this is 0 0.5 cubed. It's actually 0 0.5 to the power of three. It's appearing how many times? One, two, three, four. It's appearing four times. Let's get the answer to this problem. Okay, let's get the answer to that. So we know that this is going to happen how many times? Four times. And what is happening four times? Well, 0 0.5 um, raised to the power of, what is the answer there? That's the actually answer of three. So it's 0 0.5 three times. We get an answer of half. So the probability will just be 0 0.5. So the probability of getting a hit twice will just be 50%. Okay, now in the last question is 11.3. They're telling us that Glenda has a 50% chance of hitting the bull's eye on each shot. There's a new person being introduced. The name of the person is Glenda, okay? Don't confuse Glenda with our first character. Um, Harry and Glenda will take turns to shoot an arrow, and the first person to hit the bull's eye will be the winner. Okay, calculate the probability that the person who shoots first will be the winner of the challenge. Hmm, very interesting. We want to calculate the probability that the person who shoots first. So the person who shoots first, okay, will be the winner. Okay, cool. This is the person that will obviously hit the bull's eye. In this game, you win by hitting the bull's eye. So we don't know who is going to go first, but the winner is the person who is going to be the first to shoot the bull's eye, okay? The person who's going to get a hit at the bull's eye. Very important for you to keep that, right? So this question actually is about who is going to go first. We don't know who the first person is going to be. So instead of saying Glenda or saying uh, Henry, we're going to say, let the first person be person one. We'll call that person first person, okay? And then the second person will be the second person. Okay, cool. So we're going to use a tree diagram again to try and get an answer from this question. It's a very important uh, concept to think about. So we'll say the first person um, might win and the first person might uh, um, miss. Okay, the first person might hit. Okay, first person might hit, or the first person might miss. The second person might hit this thing, or the second person might also miss. So these are all possible outcomes that can happen as we try and, and analyze this problem. So where I'm going to start, I'm going to start here, right? We don't know who is the first person, we don't know who the second person is, right? So I'll start my tree here. I'm going to start my tree here and say, the first person is going to go first, obviously, right? So when the first person goes and throws this arrow, two things can happen. One, the first person might hit. We might have the first person succeeding with a hit, or we might have the first person missing the bull's eye. Remember, if the first person hits the bull's eye, this person automatically becomes a winner. The question says, whoever hits the bull's eye first will become the winner. So if on the first attempt, the first person hits this thing, that means the first person wins and the game is over. That's what the story says here, okay? Now, if the first person misses, the second person gets a chance to attempt uh, and hit this. So what can happen is the second person, this is obviously going to be if the first person misses. The second person might hit the bull's eye. The second person might miss the bull's eye. If the second person hits the bull's eye, that second person will be the winner. Whoever hits it first will become the winner. Assuming that the first person misses, what will happen? Well, the first person gets a chance to go again. There's only two people playing. So the first person might hit this thing, or the first person might miss this thing. If he hits, he's going to be the winner, all right? If he misses, we go back to the second person. The second person will attempt. The second person might hit. The second person might miss. If the second person misses, we go back to the first person. They're going to keep exchanging like that until we get to one of them succeeding to hit this thing. Hit or miss, okay? We can go on and on until the second come in. All right. So what I'm going to do now is write the probability values. Remember, they both have a 50% chance. So the first person might hit this thing 0.5 times. 
uh, if they hit, the hit is 0 0.5 times, the probability of a miss will also be 0 0.5. If he misses, or if she misses, whoever goes first, the second person gets a chance. The probability of the second person hitting or missing is also 0 0.5, and the miss will also be 0 0.5. If the second person misses, the first person will have a chance. The probability of success will be 0 0.5. The probability of a loss will also be 0 0.5. And this will go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, uh, like I said, until we have the second coming. Okay, cool. But what are we interested in? We are interested in the values where the first person becomes the winner. Okay? Calculate the probability that the, the person who shoots first. So we want one to be the winner. So where is 1H appearing? We look for all the parts where 1H is appearing. 1H is appearing here. This is where 1H is appearing here. What is the probability of that? The probability of that is just 0 0.5. So this is where the person hits. The second possible route that will lead us to a hit will be if the first person misses, the second person must miss, and then the first person will come back and give us a new hit. We just want 1H, we want where 1, is a hit, okay? We want where one is a hit, and we also want this part where one is a hit, okay? So how do you get to the second one? How do you get to this hit here? You must go through 0 0.5 of the first miss times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. So for me to get through the branches up to where I am now, it's actually 0 0.5 for the first miss times 0 0.5 for the second miss of the second person, and then times 0 0.5 for the hit of the first person, which is the person I'm interested in. And then for the last one, the H that I have here, of course this can go on and on and on, like I said. But for this one, because I want you to start picking up a pattern, right? To get to that, what are we going to do? Let's use blue to illustrate this. We'll start here, 0 0.5 times, 0 0.5 times, 0 0.5 times, 0 0.5 times, 0 0.5 for us to get our, our heat. How many 0 0.5s do we have in that trip? Well. We just have 0 0.5 to the power of what? 0 0.5, 2, 4, 5 times. So that is actually 0 0.5 to the power of 5. Bear in mind that this is actually 0 0.5 to the power of 3. And then this one is just 0 0.5 to the power of 1. So I'm starting to pick up a pattern where all my heats are, all right? It's 0 0.5 to the power of 1, 0 0.5 to the power of 3, and 0 0.5 to the power of um, we have to add all these possibilities. Remember, those are possible outcomes we're interested in. Interested in. It is 0 0.5 to the power 1 plus 0 0.5 to the power of 3 plus, because I said you have to add all of them, 0 0.5 to the power of 5 plus, and so on and so on. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice that this actually forms a geometric pattern. It forms a geometric pattern that goes to infinity because the game can go on and on and on forever and ever. So we're trying to sum up infinity where we've got the following information. Our A value is the first term, which is 0 0.5. Okay, our ratio is the term two divided by term one or term three divided by term two. When you divide those terms, this term divided by that, we get 0 0.5 to the power of two. You get the same result if you divide the third term and the second term, you'll still get the same common ratio. All these terms have got a common ratio, okay? What are we interested in? We want to work out the sum of infinite terms. How far is this going to be? That sum will simply be our probability of interest. So the sum to infinity is A over 1 minus R, where obviously R is between negative 1 and 1. And yes, 0 0.5 squared is actually 0 0.25. It is a number that lies between negative 1 and 1. So we know for a fact that this is actually a converging series. This series converges. Uh, A is 0 0.5. Uh, 1 is 1. The ratio is simply 0 0.5 squared. What we're going to do now is just call the calculator and try and figure out what is the product of what we're looking at there. Okay, fraction, where is this fraction button? Uh, you put 0 0.5 on top as your A value, you've got 1 minus, you have 0 0.5 here raised to the power of 2. The final answer here comes out as 0 0.67. So the answer will be 0 0.67. That will be the probability of the first person winning. 0 0.67 will be the solution.